This is Greyfriars Kirkyard, otherwise known as the City of the Dead. It's famous for being the last resting place of a dog, the inspiration for some heavyweight literary character names, and for being the most haunted cemetery in the world, with a particularly problematic poltergeist. It has quite a lot more going on than that though. First things first, the dog. This is Greyfriars Bobby, possibly the most loyal dog in the world. He gave his name to some unfortunate rhyming slang and his own Disney film. Bobby's owner was John Gray, a night watchman for the city of Edinburgh Police. For two years, night after night, the pair trudged the streets, keeping watch over the city. And then John Gray died of tuberculosis and was buried here. For the next 14 years, Bobby stood guard over his grave every day. Legend has it he only left for food and that eventually they took pity on him and built him a shelter. He was quite famous in his own lifetime. The Lord Provost even presented him with a collar, basically giving him the freedom of the city. After a bit of a campaign, the Sky Terror who played Bobby in the film, also called Bobby, will soon be buried here alongside him. There is a tradition of rubbing his nose for luck, but that is slowly destroying the statue, so maybe best not to do that. The graveyard itself was named after the Franciscan friars who lived in the area and the distinctive grey robes they wore. This place has had a lot going on over the years. Most recently, it's been the inspiration for some character names in the Harry Potter books. Mad-Eye Moody, Sirius Black, Amos Diggory. The man in the headstone behind me is William McGonagall, Scotland's worst poet. You can find a video on him in the link at the end of this video. And of course, no reference to JK Rowling character names would be complete without Lord Voldemort himself, Thomas Riddle Esquire. JK Rowling did write some of the Harry Potter books in coffee shops around here. The Elephant House is probably the most famous one. She also used the school behind me, George Heriot's, as the inspiration for Hogwarts. This, as the sign suggests, is the Flodden Wall. 24 feet tall, encircling most of the city when it was built, and kinda pointless. It was built following the Battle of Flodden in 1513. Against the fear of an oncoming English invasion that actually never happened. You can still see a couple of bits of it around the city. You want to know about the darker stuff though, right? It doesn't get much darker and the killing times. On the 28th of February 1638, the National Covenant was signed here in Greyfriars. Following the union of the crowns in 1603, the Stuart dynasty ruled over Scotland and England. Charles I declared himself spiritual head of the Church of Scotland. Presbyterians have never been keen on being told what to do, so they signed their covenant, a lot of them in blood declaring that no one had divine right and pledging to defend their religion against outside interference. They'd go on to pay the price, with a lot of them being martyred. This is the Black Mausoleum, a grand neoclassical style tomb and the last resting place of George Mackenzie, known as the Bloody Mackenzie, a 17th century Lord Advocate of Edinburgh who was only too happy to go after the Covenanters. After the Battle of Bothwell Bridge in 1679, Mackenzie imprisoned 400 men here behind me in a special outdoor Covenanters prison. No shelter, only four ounces of bread a day for four months. Some died and some were executed. Of the 279 who survived, all pledged allegiance to the Crown and were transported to be sold as slaves. On their way to Orkney, their ship was wrecked taking a further 209 lives with it. The Bloody Mackenzie is thought to have been responsible for at least 18,000 deaths. These days, his graves left untended as a mark of respect to the people who lost their lives. In 1999, a homeless man broke into the mausoleum looking for somewhere to sleep and fell through the floor into the crypt. There are many stories of Mackenzie's ghost having a go at people with pinching, burning, biting and unexplained bruises being common symptoms. In 2003, two teenage boys broke into the mausoleum 
through a ventilation shaft, got down to the coffins and stole a skull. They were playing football with it when the police arrived. There have been two attempts at exorcisms in Greyfriars, with one of the exorcists dying a week later. You'll understand if I don't hang about. During the Enlightenment and beyond, when Edinburgh was a centre of modern medicine, this place was a centre for something else. Body snatching. These are mort safes. Cages placed over the tops of the coffins to guard your earthly remains from the resurrection men. The body snatchers. These are a more high-end solution. Caged layers. The bookshop at the entrance to the Kirkyard was actually a watch house. It was quite a big problem. I think my favourite gravestone, apart from McGonagall's, is this one, the tomb of the surgeon James Borthwick, erected by his son. It features a dancing skeleton, the King of Terrors, holding the Book of Destiny, and even Death's Scythe in the background, along with the obligatory skull and crossbones. I mean, if you're going to go for it, don't hold back.